Good morning. Welcome to my office. Welcome to another Word of the Week, our weekly wow. Our word this week is the word absurd. Not a Bible word in every translation, but a possible translation of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, says the natural person does not accept the things of God's Spirit because to him they are absurd. We live in two realms. Want to think with you, perhaps Bible principles, Bible teaching, a little more difficult. The two realms in which we live, the physical or natural realm and the spiritual or supernatural realm. In the life of a Christian, these two intersect. We live in the physical realm. We have physical life governed by natural law. We simultaneously live in the spiritual realm with spiritual life and spiritual law. When spiritual laws operate in and govern the spiritual realm, that's normal. That's expected. God's spiritual supernatural laws are not special. They're not extraordinary in the spiritual supernatural realm. Supernatural occurrences, again, I'm saying, are normal in the supernatural realm. But when spiritual realities enter and operate in the physical realm, the natural realm, they are then supernatural, above nature, beyond nature. A person who merely lives life in the physical realm, with physical needs, desires, hopes, dreams, plans, goals, problems, heartaches, is unlikely to catch a glimpse of life's fullness and richness because those are possibilities that exist in the spiritual realm. In the text that we're focusing on, Paul says that such a person will consider spiritual things absurd. Listen to the words of Paul. Think with me. Acknowledging, advancing, helping with physical needs only accentuates the reality of those physical needs. Life in the physical realm focuses on physical needs. That's natural. So how can the natural physical person perceive spiritual realities? God creates a sense of spiritual need through the gospel. The gospel proclaimed creates a sense of the need for the gospel. So the Bible says again and again that the gospel is to be proclaimed. Blindness initiated by the God of this world causes unbelief. What's the solution? Proclaim Jesus. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. The light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. People who see only the physical part of existence believe that they have morality under control. They have a good life in their own eyes. Their needs are physical. They have no sense of need for the gospel. Ask and it will be given, but they will never ask. They cannot see. How will they see? How will the absurd become logical, practical, rational, realistic, reasonable, even wise, intelligent? The message of the gospel creates a sense of need for the gospel. My Jesus knows just what I need. The message has power to create life, spiritual life the life of God in us, the presence of his spirit. As gospel power penetrates lives to bring new life, it creates realities that correspond to that life. Previously unknown, unrecognized, unfelt needs surface. Nothing can satisfy those spiritual needs except that which answers to the problem that creates the need. So here's a spiritual principle. Lack of X leads to a need for X. To help a person know the need for X, one must help that person see the lack of X. Pretty simple. Think. Consider with me. Ultimately, Jesus' coming was not about identifying and filling physical needs, helping with physical needs that were lacking. Yes, he did that. But he came proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Likewise, we must be about developing spiritual perceptions seeing spiritual needs. The words of Jesus, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Too often we share and preach our own experiences. Classes and sermons are easily filled with me. Or we preach human experience. We call attention to the experiences of many others. People are interested, but there is no sense of need awakened. Moralizing is equally impotent. You should do this. Again, listen to Jesus. Avoid the absurdity. Lift up Jesus. Preach Jesus. 
then someone will say to you, you're talking about something that I did not know existed. There's a big hole in my I don't have that. Not personal testimony that draws people. Jesus said it. The words that I speak, they are to you, spirit and life. The words of Jesus will bring others to focus on the need that only he satisfies. I hope that what I've shared with you is not absurd, that we can think afresh about what it means for us to live as God's people focused on spiritual things in this world about us. May we be examples. May we call others to see the great possibilities of the abundant life made possible by Jesus' death and resurrection. Remember that God loves you. I love you. That's the way it's going to be. I pray that you'll have a blessed week as you live life in the full reality of spiritual life everywhere about us, but so often not seen by others. May God bless us as we seek to be that light.